In this video, we'll be comparing the top content management systems out there or CMS platforms for you to choose for your website. Content management system is simply an easy way for you to start a website without having to learn any code. So Syed and I will cover the top ones out there and we'll cover which ones we think you should choose. So let's dive in. Number one is WordPress.org, which as you can imagine, a channel all about WordPress, WordPress will be our number one pick for the best CMS platform. But it's not just us, right? 41% of all websites on the internet use WordPress to power them. Um, it's very important to not confuse WordPress.org with WordPress.com when we're talking about CMS platforms because WordPress.org is the free open source CMS that's originally designed for blogging, but now it can be used to build websites, online stores, and everything else, whereas WordPress.com is just a blog hosting platform. So very important to not confuse the two. What I really, really like about WordPress is the flexibility and freedom that it offers you to just build any type of website. You want to start an online store? Great. Auction site, membership site, blog, small business website. You can do all of that with, with very, very little technical knowledge or coding knowledge. Uh, the new WordPress block editor makes it super easy to create great looking pages on your site. You, you know, WordPress comes with thousands and thousands of free WordPress themes. Which, lets you, which is basically pre-made templates that you can build your websites with. Um, there are plugins, which are like apps for your website, and there's over 58,000 free plugins, more than any other content management uh, software in the market. Nobody have this kind of integration ecosystem that WordPress has. And you can use these to create, add contact forms, photo galleries, e you know, shopping carts, everything in between, and most of the tools are free. WordPress, uh, another big thing about WordPress is that it's super SEO friendly, um, which means your website built with WordPress will usually rank higher than any other CMS platforms as long as you're using one of the best SEO plugins like All-in-One SEO or Yoast. Um, WordPress also has a really supportive community, uh, which means you can get, which means you can get like good user support um, from other users that are using WordPress as well as experts. So for example, if you go to our WP Beginner Engage Facebook group, there's over 75,000 members there that are just willing to help each other out. It's super awesome. Um, and unlike other platforms which restrict your ability to switch platforms later or make money, WordPress gives you complete freedom to own your website, own your content. And for me, that's a huge thing. Um, out of all website builders, WordPress is very affordable because you just need a hosting account. You can go with Bluehost or SiteGround, et cetera. And hosting can cost as low as like two bucks, you know, 275 a month. And that includes a free domain, free SSL and everything. The only downside to WordPress, which really, in my opinion, isn't a huge downside, is you do have to manage your own backups um, and security. But if you're using a good hosting provider, let's say like a Bluehost or SiteGround, they're, they're keeping backups of your website. Um, and you can just install one of the many security plugins like whether Sukuri or WordFent and or add even Cloudflare on top of it and you will have the most secure website um, on the internet. Number two is Joomla and it is another free open source CMS platform out there. It comes with a lot of templates and extensions. It is free to use, but like with WordPress, you will have to create your own hosting provider as well as a domain name. Now it was first released back in 05 and so like WordPress has been around for quite a while. It's packed with a ton of features and you can also do one-click installation. It's not really ideal for CMS platform for beginners. It's more for developers. It actually was the first thing that I used until I found WordPress, and I immediately dumped Joomla for WordPress because of the fact that it's just not as easy to use. Now, some of the pros are that it gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, you have plenty of options to choose from. It's a good choice for building something out that's complicated. It's especially helpful for developers if they want to create their own item. Now, like WordPress Joomla is open source, you'll have a community of people to help you as you probably will need that help as you're going through it. Now, some of the cons are even the fans will admit it's complicated and there aren't as many options or additional features as say like with WordPress.com where there are thousands and thousands of plugins that let you do whatever you want to do with your website. Some of these extensions aren't as robust out there and a lot of times they will conflict with their modules as you get into them. Number three is Drupal, uh, which is another open source CMS platform, which means it, it gives you a lot of freedom. See, 
we, as you notice, that our top three picks are all open source uh, because we really believe in uh, website owners, business owners having full ownership and freedom of their website, the ability to move and do whatever they need. Um, Drupal powers about 1% of all websites on the internet. Um, so it's about, you know, WordPress is 40 times bigger. But, you know, Drupal is loved by developers. Um, most of the time to build a custom website with Drupal, you're going to have to hire a developer. They will be way more expensive than WordPress, but in certain spaces, when you're trying to build complicated sites uh, with a lot of data, um, Drupal can be a good option. Again, it's a personal preference. Um, with Drupal, you, again, you have to have your own hosting and everything, but like hosting like SiteGround have, you know, pre-built uh, installations for Drupal. Um, it's very easy to add content. There's tons of custom content types available. That, they're very flexible, but you have to know what you're doing. It's not as beginner friendly. Um, they do have different modules available that you, you can add to your website. They work very similar to like WordPress plugins. Support is available via community similar to Joomla and WordPress. Um, user management is easy um, as well. Uh, you, you can create new roles, specify permissions and, and, and whatnot. The downside is that these are, you know, websites super heavily customized, created by developers. And generally Drupal sites are a lot harder, to, a lot more expensive to create and a lot more expensive to maintain. Um, so that's, that's that. And then, you know, it can be very tricky to figure out how to change the appearance of your site, add extra items. Um, it's definitely not as beginner friendly as WordPress. In WordPress, you have, you know, drag and drop page builders, whether it is uh, Seedprod or Elementor or Divi or what have you, which lets anybody in, to build a completely custom website, no code needed. With Drupal, you're going to have to hire an expert um, developer. But when you think about the content management aspect of it, it is really robust. Number four is WooCommerce. And WooCommerce is the most popular e-commerce platform in the world. It's really flexible and it's easy to manage. Now, technically it's not a CMS, but it does connect and requires WordPress.org. So if you're looking to create a shop and a blog with this, then this is the perfect setup for you. If it were a CMS plugin, then it would have 5.8% of the market share, which is higher than even Joomla or Drupal. And that's the percentage of all websites out there. Now with WordPress, the pros are that it's available as a free software, free add-on, you also WooCommerce hosting, as well as a domain name to get started. There's a ton of themes out there, as well as tons of plugins out there to extend the functionality of your e-commerce website. You can also do physical or digital products. You can set up even affiliate products if you don't have your own product yet. You can fully manage all of your inventory within WooCommerce and that makes it easy to keep track of whatever you have in stock. They also come with a PayPal and Stripe integration automatically and then you can do add-ons such as authorize.net if you need to. Now there are a lot of different options with WooCommerce. This could be a downside because it can be so overwhelming to get started sometimes if you're new to it. It's also technically it works with any WordPress theme but just because it technically works with any WordPress theme, you might want to look out for WooCommerce specific themes to really get the look and feel that you want with your website. Number five is Wix. It is a popular CMS platform. You might've seen even uh, TV commercials, depending on where you live. Um, they advertise very heavily. It is beginner friendly um, and it is something that a lot of uh, new users end up choosing because Wix has a free plan, a limited free plan. Um, you know, it, it comes with drag and drop interface, makes it really easy for you to create pages uh, that look just the way how you want it. Um, there's tons of pre-made templates. Wix has a growing app marketplace as well. So you can, um, you know, install apps on your site similar to WordPress plugins. Uh, there's several downsides to it. One, the free plan is very limited. You have a Wix branded domain and they show ads on your site. Uh, and that's the way Wix makes money. So, uh, but unless you pay them a lot of money to un un just, you know, go to the pro plan. Um, you cannot run an e-commerce store on, on Wix unless you upgrade to their e-commerce plans, which are far more expensive than their normal plan, um, at which point it's way better for you to use uh, WooCommerce and WordPress because you can get started with Bluehost, I think like three bucks um, for that. Um, once you once you choose a template on Wix, you can't change to a different one. Uh, this means you get stuck with the layout um, in the future unless you rebuild the whole website. Whereas in WordPress, uh, you know, you can more or less change a theme and, and still retain all the content and everything. Um, 
And the last big downside that we don't like about Wix is uh, it doesn't make it super easy for you to download your data and export it. A lot of times, you know, we get users asking us, say, how do I switch from Wix to WordPress? I've outgrown Wix um, because as your business grow, you will. Um, and it doesn't make it so easy for you to switch away. Um, and you're going to have to do a lot of manual copy and pasting. We do have instructions and tutorials on WP Beginner on how to do that. Um, but that's one of the other downsides of Wix. But despite all of the you know cons of it, Wix is still very popular because they do a great job in advertising and they uh, power about one and a half percent of all websites on the internet. Number six is Big Commerce, and Big Commerce is a fully hosted e-commerce platform, which sometimes is called an all-in-one platform. It's easy to get started if you're a beginner and you're wanting to start selling. It hosts your site for you as well as providing an actual CMS part uh, all on its own. It can also handle the security and the backups for you. These There's a trial plan, so that makes it pretty interesting for you if you want to just get started and see how it is for you. You can also use a free domain, which is a brand. It'd be like mystore.mybigcommerce.com instead of doing a custom domain. There's a lot of different ways that you can take payments, so that's helpful if you want to do Apple Pay, PayPal, Amazon Pay, they can do that, or even just credit card or debit card. Now, BigCommerce has support options for you, access straight to your dashboard 24-7, so that is really cool. They even have live chat, email, phone support if you get stuck in anything. You can use BigCommerce with, with WordPress if you want, and they will give you the best of both worlds of your CMS as well as a shop. Now, some of the downsides of it is it doesn't give you as much control over your website as, say, WooCommerce. There are limited themes and integrations which might hold you back from growing your website into what you want it to be. You also, once you have a sale that reaches a certain level, then they will automatically upgrade you to the next level, which might cause increased expenses on your monthly costs. Number seven is Shopify. It is a popular all-in-one hosted uh, CMS platform for e-commerce websites. So if you're um, looking to build an online store and you just want to get started without buying hosting, installing any software, uh, managing things like updates and backups, then Shopify is where you go. And a lot of uh, you know online store owners, they you know set up their stores with Shopify. It has a drag and drop interface. It even supports in-store sales, uh, which is great if you have a physical store as well as an online presence. Um, there's a lot of things to love about Shopify. You can accept credit card, debit cards, uh, PayPal, you know, as, as their default uh, solutions. If you want to use any third-party um, payment providers, though, Shopify will charge you extra fees, which, you know, adds up because it's a fee on every transaction. Um, but, you know, as long as you're okay with using Shopify Pay, um, which is powered by Stripe, on, on, I believe so, and, uh, you know, you won't pay any additional fees you would only pay the normal fees that you'd pay um, there's tons of extensions and themes available for Shopify uh, you don't need to upgrade if you make over a certain dollar amount in sales like you have to do with big commerce um, they do have uh, you know 24 7 support there's a huge community around it um, what I personally don't like about Shopify is that your costs can end up quite high, especially if you want to use add-ons or third-party apps. In general, a WordPress plugin for WooCommerce may cost you $40, whereas it might cost you double that on, on Shopify. Uh, so Shopify is really built on that monthly recurring revenue aspect. So the cheapest plan is $29 a month. Um, but as you start thinking about, let's say if you, if you want to use a... Um, pop-up solution, it might cost you anywhere from $9 to $49 a month. Whereas in WordPress, you can even have like a free free pop-up plugin that, that you can use on your e-commerce store. So WordPress has just so many free extensions available um, that you can use, you know, with, alongside WooCommerce, which, uh, which is why we have Shopify listed as number seven instead of like higher up in our list. To sum it all up, Shopify is a great CMS platform for anybody looking to start an online store. Number eight is WordPress.com. Now we started this whole thing out with WordPress.org and now we're going to end it with WordPress.com. And WordPress.com is the commercial hosted version of WordPress. It's easy to confuse it with WordPress.org, like Syed said, which is also which is open source and it's a self-hosted WordPress platform. If you're not sure about the difference, definitely check out the link in the description below on the differences. But with WordPress.com, you get all-in-one CMS. Uh, that's hosted for you. You can even purchase a domain name if you want. You can use the free subdomain, which would be mysite.wordpress.com if you don't want to pay. Some of the pros is it's just easy to get started. You simply sign up and you're getting going. Um, you can create a site completely free of charge. 
you probably will want to pay for at least the cheapest plan though so you can use your own domain name and then there are several themes that you can use um, and then there are several themes that you can use on your wordpress.com site you can easily switch between those which is cool now as your site grows in size and popularity you can upgrade to their next tier plan there are a lot of options with that it has built-in analytics which means that you can see statistics and how many people are visiting your site. The weird thing about it is, is that you won't be able to use Google Analytics unless you upgrade to their business plan with that. And it's pretty straightforward. If you decide to change to a more powerful WordPress.org self-hosted solution, it's pretty easy to make that migration. Now, some of the cons are like what we're saying is they're limited in monetization features. There's some things that you just can't monetize with your website unless you at least have the business plan. Even with that, you have some limitations on it. You can't add custom domain names unless you at least pay for the cheapest amount on there. And then there's several plugins that you just can't add to your website. So if there's some functionality that you want to add to your WordPress.com site, you simply can't do it because you have to go by their rules and they're not near as many available for you. So if you don't have full control of your website, then that's also a limitation and why we always recommend moving over to WordPress.org. Number nine is Ghost. Ghost is a CMS platform specifically designed for bloggers. Um, you'll often hear it described as a headless CMS, uh, which sounds a little odd, but it just means that the CMS platform doesn't force you to deliver content in a specific way. You can, um, you, you can use that data to produce uh, content in any way you want, in a mobile app, in a website, however you, want, however you need it to be. Um, if you're not a developer though, you, or you just want to use Ghost for blogging, you don't really need to worry about that part. Um, it's a straightforward built-in blogging uh, tool. Uh, some of the pros that people like about it is that you can use the markdown um, way of writing when you're writing in the Ghost editor. Uh, it's just a way to format text like without using a mouse. You can make things bold, italic, and so on um, with shortcuts. Um, their content editor uses cards. Uh, these works a bit like the WordPress blocks in the block editor. Um, Ghost was started by one of the old uh, longtime WordPress contributors, uh, John Nolan. So it's pretty cool. Um, Ghost has good support for SEO. Um, you know, they even have a setup that allows you to charge for content to run a premium content site. What they don't have is they don't offer the same amount of power and flexibility as WordPress. And that is a decision that they have chose because they want to focus entirely on making the best blogging software out there. Um, but, you know, when you think about, you know, if you want to make an e-commerce site, a full business website, Ghost is not the solution. Okay, now that we've covered all of those, it shouldn't be any surprise that we believe that WordPress.org is the best content management system for you to start with your website. And if you choose to use WordPress.org, then make sure you watch this video next as I walk you through step by step on exactly how to set up your WordPress website so you can get started and up and running quickly. And I'll see you over there.